Hello and welcome back to the Coders Legacy channel. In today's video, we're going to explore how to create a calendar or a date picker in Takeinter. This is basically a special widget which presents to the user a bunch of dates. He can select the year, the month, the day, and then have that returned to us. So that's pretty cool. So how are we going to create this? Well, we could create this using Takeinter's native widgets, but that would be very difficult for a, a normal person. So instead, we're going to use this library called TK Calendar. So this can be installed using pip install TK Calendar. Okay. And I already have it installed, so I won't run that. Now, what we're going to do here is create this widget uh, down here, actually. Okay. Calendar is equal to calendar. And then we do root. And then, of course, we pack this calendar in. And we can get a really early look at our calendar just by running this code. Okay, this is what it looks like. So here we can see that there's the year that we can scroll through. Okay, we can change the month. And there's also over here the different days that we can select. But now we need to see how we can customize this because there's a lot of options here. And we need to kind of change the way it's showing. And then we also need to return the selected date to our application. So first of all, one thing I want to fix is that over here, the user can go up as many years as he wants. Okay. So like there's no limit. So what we're going to do is specify a min date and a max date. And this is pretty useful. For example, if you are not allowing people under 18 to, you know, use your application, so you could keep the minimum date 18 years before the current time, stuff like that. We're gonna use the date time library here. We're gonna create a date object and then pass it to the min date and max date parameters. Okay, so for example, the min date could be 2020, zero, wait, not zero, one, one. Okay, and then the max date could be max date is equal to date time. 2023 let's say the end of 2023 okay so this all right now if i go forward actually i can't go forward anymore because it's 2023 i can't go to 2024 and once i reach 2020 i can't go back anymore and we can still change the the month here and just a few other customizations uh, or actually let's take a look at those after we return the date First, let's explore how to do that. Now, there are two ways we can do this. We could create a button, okay, uh, a button called submit, or we could use the calendar event. The calendar event, uh, which we can do with bind, calendar selected, and then link this to a function, okay, update label. I'm going to create a label right now, actually, because we need some way to display the date, right? Or we, well, we don't need to. We could just print it out, but it would be better if we actually made it show. Okay. Label.pack. Okay. Now what we're going to do is create this update label function. Okay. And over here, I'll do label.config. This is the function that's going to run whenever we... Um, whenever this calendar is selected, whenever a date is selected. So over here, I'll do text is equal to selected date. And then we'll concatenate the current date that the user selected. Okay, get date. This is the function that's used. And alternatively, you could connect a button called submit and it could run this function and just, you know, access the current date using this method, get date. So let's run this code now. And here you can see the label down there. Okay, so if I select this, oh, okay, there's an, an event object passed. So let's try this again. And now I'm going to select 16. Okay, so, so now it shows over there, 2, 16, 23. And uh, hold on. Okay, so this is clearly changing. Okay, let me go back a year and change over here. Okay. And interestingly, what is this? 
Oh, I guess it's uh, colored like this because it's a weekday. Okay. And yeah, so this is basically how we can you know, return the date. And now let's take a look at a few more customizations because as you'll notice, in my opinion at least, there's a lot of clutter on this calendar. So let's try and, um, you know, reduce that clutter a bit. So for example, I'm just going to go through a few options here that I found kind of interesting. So show week numbers is equal to false. Uh, I can't remember what this did exactly, but uh, yeah, that removed those week numbers over there, which to me kind of seemed off. I think this is a bit better. And there's another option that I used earlier, show other month days. And I'm just going to tell you in advance that there are like dozens of these options. Now this is also, I think, good because it re removes the days of the next month, which I think is a bit, you know, it just increases the clutter. So this is a more simplified version that's easier on the eyes. All right. Now I'm just going to tell you that there's a bunch of other options like background, okay, and foreground and stuff like that. And you can go ahead and explore those as much as you want to. I just copy pasted some styles from my website, which I used for the calendar widget over there. And let me just run this code and show you what these options do. Background is basically the strip over here. Foreground is the text color on this strip. Select background is the background of the currently selected date. Normal background is background of the normal dates. Okay, this, these dates that you see here, all of these, they're light green. Then weekend background is this, okay, the weekend dates. Then weekend foreground is the text color on these dates, okay? So that's basically the gist of it. And there's obviously more of these that you can see. Uh, I'll leave a link to my website in the description below, all right? Hope you guys enjoyed the video.